So I know it's your birthday. You remembered. Of course, and I got you something. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Hope you love it. It's the thought that counts. I love the Harry Potter films and have always loved how they handle pictures in the film. That additional effort of motion adds so much to the fantasy of the world, and it's a fun and unique element overall. So today, we are gonna take a look at how we made our own version of this effect. Now, in the films, there's another effect that's similar, which is the ghost in the paintings. While it's similar in its effect, you can definitely take this execution and adjust it for the painting idea. It's just a bit different of an idea, so we are going to just focus in on how they handle the photographs. First up, we shot Emily's portrait asset, and the portraits usually just loop, so we just needed a span of time of her doing some kind of performance, and we shot this against a decently dark background, which would help us with spinning the frame all the way around, and it gave us a good old school portrait look. So we locked that all down, and then grabbed that quick performance from Emily. Now for our picture frame shot, we made sure to get a frame that has this white padded area here, which helped us with tracking, but also has this additional area to push the idea of that photo feel and moved us further away from a video screen vibe. Now with this sort of shot, you often do see green being used with some tracking markers, like in a photo frame like this, a phone screen or any other screen, since it can be easily tracked and then you can key that out. But we opted to go with just a black backing for our effect so that we could easily retain all of the real reflections in the scene that you see here, which we purposefully had some light spill on the ceiling so that we could get those reflections on the glass to help sell the effect even more. As always, we're doing whatever we can in camera to help sell the digital aspects. Now we have covered different surface tracking and even green screen replacements for situations similar to this in the past, but it's all a little bit different. So we're going to show a green screen version of this in the end of the episode. And the stock asset that we're showing here is one that we got from this week's sponsor, which is again, Pond5. I've been using Pond5 for years, going all the way back to my short film, Proximity, unlike most sites, you have flexibility with how you pay for assets, like with our old short film Portal Combat. I needed some car sounds and ricochet sounds for bullets, but I didn't want to buy a full expensive pack somewhere because we just didn't have the budget for it. So here I could jump in and get only what I needed. Of course, you can also save using credit packs or choose a membership option, whichever makes the most sense for you. Of course, it's not just sound effects. Pond5 is an absolutely massive resource for stock videos with over 30 million video assets, but they also have photos, music, sound effects, after effects templates, and 3D models, all created by artists for artists. And you can tell they love storytellers because of the level of quality that they put out, but also the additional tools that make our lives easier, like their advanced visual search. Of course, all of their assets are yours to use anywhere for professional or personal projects across all platforms forever. And to top it off, they have a great collection of free assets that you can use right now, but better still, you can get access to all of that, plus their endless assets with 20% off your first purchase from Pond5 by using the link in the description below. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping back in, we have our footage shot, including the frame with the black background. So we'll drop our footage into a new comp in After Effects, and for the tracking, we're gonna be using Mocha AE. For our shot here, Josh flips the frame over during the scene, so we're gonna start our track at the end of the timeline instead, so we can track back until that movement. Using the X-Spline tool, we're gonna draw a shape around the inner photo frame. Then, if we enable Show Planar Surface, we can align these points to match the area we'll be at 
adding in the moving image. These points will be used for a corner pin applied to our photo footage later, so you want to be precise where you place them. For our shot, we'll check perspective, then track backwards. Pretty much everything tracks fine until that initial turnover, so to help, you can change the spline, which will add a keyframe, and see if that tracks better. We had to adjust the spline over a few frames here to track, but it just depends on your footage and motion. So pick a frame where the blue planar track is well aligned with our photo frame, and in Adjust Track tab, click Set Master All, which will add a keyframe. Now moving through the timeline, we can alter any of the four points whenever they slip out of track. We ended up tweaking each corner per frame during the turnover section of the shot, but eventually we have a solid track to use so we can now save and close Mocha. So we have our portrait footage of Emily that we're gonna drop into a new comp here, then drop this comp into the main comp with our tracked footage. In the Mocha effect under tracking data, we can select the spline layer we tracked and then change the export option to corner pin support motion blur. Selecting our Emily footage will apply the export and you can see it added a corner pin effect and keyframed each corner position to our footage to fit within the photo frame. The only issue is we are getting a squeezed image because our landscape footage is being fitted into a portrait aspect for the photo frame. If this was a phone screen, we could easily look up the pixel dimension and match our comp size, but with the photo frame, we're gonna just have to eyeball it. In the Emily footage comp, we will pre-comp her footage again, moving it into a new comp. In here, we will change the comp settings, lowering the horizontal pixel value to make this comp portrait, trying to visually match the photo frame dimensions. Then back in the first Emily footage comp, with the layer selected, go to layer, transform, fit to comp, which will stretch the sides to fill the frame. Then back in our main comp, you will see the scaling now looks better, but you can always go back and adjust the comp dimensions if needed. To see our glass reflection, set the footage comp layer to screen and use a curves to lower the brightness. We also altered the color slightly to match our scene and to give it an older feel, we double click the rectangle mask to add one around the borders and used a high feather. Last thing to do is enable motion blur and because Josh's thumb appears in front of the footage for a few frames, we can create a solid layer and set the footage to alpha invert matte. Draw a rough mask shape for his thumb on the solid with some feather and keyframe the mask to roto his thumb for these frames to bring it back to the front. And from this point, it's easy to quickly replace the photo footage by dropping things into the portrait size comp and it will automatically update the main effect maintaining everything we previously did. Now, like we talked about in the beginning, if you are using green, like in this example we got from Pond5, you can use a similar process. Again, tracking the photo frame in Mocha and applying the corner pin track to your footage. However, in this shot, because the camera is moving, but the photo frame is remaining static, we can actually 3D track the scene and instead make our photo footage a 3D layer placed in the correct space for the frame. Then we can place the main plate above and key out the green. Next, we need to add a reflection and dirt effect to make it fit into the scene better. Again, if you shoot with black instead, you can just retain these original plates. But for this, we used a stock photo of a room as a 3D layer, pushed it way back in Z position to give some parallax with the camera movement. And you'll need to briefly hide the photo footage since that is closer in 3D space and would block the visibility of the room photo while we position and scale. Then once the visibility is re-enabled, set the footage layer to screen, then using a curves effect on the room reflection layer will really lower the brightness and use a fast blur effect to knock it out of focus. If it's still too prominent, you can also lower the layer opacity as well. For glass dirt, we used a texture in the same 3D position as the photo frame and set it to screen with lower opacity, giving us this dust or scratchy look to the glass. But that's it, now we have our own Harry Potter style portrait effect. Not a very hard effect to do and super fun. And although it is a bit specific, it's a great effect to know since with some adjustments, you can use this same idea for a ton of different applications. And if you'd like some more Harry Potter inspired effects, including some spell casting, check out the notes below. We'll place some older episodes in there for you. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing that and hit the bell button to be notified when we put up new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.